So livestock plays a very important role in Indian economy. It provides livelihood and employment to the vast population, especially in the rural India. And it contributes 4.11% of GDP and 25.6% of total agricultural GDP. And sheep and goat occupies a significant portion in terms of its production and contribution towards the national economy. But there are many hindrances to this industry like uh, this global warming, then inclined weather condition, lack of pasture lands, all these are creating a havoc to our this small ruminant industry. To uplift this industry, there are three main pillars that we should work on. That is on the nutritional management, reproductive management, and health management. So health management, it aims to control or eradicate the economic and zoonotic diseases in sheep and goat. Then parasitic diseases are one of the important, important disease that cause loss in the productivity. Then uh, these parasitic diseases, mainly they are uh, uh, internal parasite and external parasites. Though we always talk about the internal parasites, external parasites or ectoparasites are always neglected. Most of the times they are neglected, but they are also very much important, uh, which can produce poor quality uh, sheep and goat products especially uh, skin, uh, their condition of the uh, skin, and also in the loss in the income. And also, these uh, ectoparasites, they carry some important pathogens that again act as internal parasite for these small ruminants. So the uh, common external parasites of sheep and goats are ticks, lice, cats, flies, and mites. So today, we, I am going to uh, cover the ticks and mites infestation. So ticks, they are classified under, both ticks and mites, they are classified under the phylum arthropoda, subphylum chelicerata, uh, class arachnida, and under subclass acari. Especially these ticks and mites, they are also termed as acarines because they are coming under the uh, order acarina. Then uh, the mites are coming under the family thrombiculidae, and uh, ticks, again, they can be divided into two types. Hard ticks and soft ticks. These hard ticks are coming under Ixodidae family and soft ticks are coming under Argacidae family. In this Argacidae family, in the soft ticks, the important one for the small ruminants and for the mammalians are the Autobias, under the genus Autobias. All these other uh, genus Argus and Ornithodorus, they are important for the poultry birds. Then uh, these hard ticks, uh, Amblyoma, Dharma Center, Hemophysalis, Hyaloma, Exodis, and Ripicephalus are under this Exodidae. For sheep and goat, the most important are the Hyaloma, Ripicephalus, and uh, Hemophysalis. Again, according to the, depending on the number of hosts, they are needed to complete their life cycle. These uh, heart ticks, they can be again uh, divided into three groups. One is uh, this one host tick two host tick and three host tick. This one host ticks, these ticks, they need a, a host uh, to complete their life cycle only once. And uh, two host ticks, they need a, a host for twice. That host can be the same host and it can be the different host, but they need uh, the host twice to complete their life cycle. And three host ticks, they need three times, uh, they need three times the host. So the ticks and mites, because they are under a, a same order, but they are only, uh, the family is only different. So the difference between the ticks and mites is literally there is no difference, only the size is the difference. These uh, ticks, they are, uh, they can be seen by naked eye, they can be from few millimeter to few centimeter. And mites are up to mil one millimeter. They are less than millimeter, so they cannot be seen by naked eye, we need a microscope to see the mites. And one more difference is uh, ticks are less hairy and mites are a little bit more hairy. Uh, their body parts contain lots of hairs. That, that two are the uh, main difference between ticks and mites. So now coming to the ticks, their body parts, they have um, capitulum, uh, the hard ticks and soft ticks again. The difference is the soft ticks, they do not have this uh, hard dorsal cell. 
and sometimes they do not have the eye also and the soft ticks uh, their capitulum is not visible from the dorsal dorsally their capitulum is placed ventrally so we cannot see from upper side their uh, head we say head but is capitulum a head like structure uh, it doesn't have all the properties of head but it is uh, considered as head the, that is not visible from dorsally in the soft ticks and in hard ticks it is uh, visible dorsally in the main difference is they have a hard dorsal shield we can see in this uh, here dorsal shield so the tick species they can be sometimes identified according to their location uh, of attachment into the host like hemophysalis they uh, concentrate mainly in the air limbs dew lap snake tail axial groin and the abdomen and rhipicephalus microplus before previously it was known as uh, bufilus microplus it was uh, it is uh, commonly seen to attach to the ear limbs dew lap abdomen and chest and rhipicephalus decoloratus it is uh, observed to uh, locate in the abdomen limb dew lap and groin then amblyomma variegatum it uh, attaches to the under the tail margin of the anus limbs and groin rhipicephalus abatsi it is it attaches to the neck usually and under the tail and around the anus and hyaloma anatolicum anatolicum it is attaches to the chest abdomen neck udder and scrotum this is important because according to the location and uh, by seeing the ticks we can identify the species of the ticks so these are the common ticks of sheep and goat this is um, the first one is the hyaloma second is hemophysalis and the third one uh, is rhipicephalus bufila species and uh, the amblyomma it is um, dorsal shield of the amblyomma is some marks are there on the dorsal fin so these are some common ticks which are seen to affect sheep and goat some more uh, examples like hemophysalis puchensis uh, hemophysalis bispinosa they uh, affect uh, sheep the common ticks that are encountered in sheep are hemophysalis cuchensis hemophysalis bispinosa rhipicephalus hemophysaloides rhipicephalus sanguineus hyaloma marginatum isaaci hyaloma anatolicum anatolicum and of goats hemophysalis bispinosa hemophysalis cuch chensis hemophysalis intermedia hemophysalis uh, megale lymi and rhipicephalus hemophysaloides hyaloma marginatum isaaci these are commonly known to affect sheep and goat in this picture we can see the how this one host tick they complete their life cycle uh, to complete their life cycle uh, the one host one host tick though it is not very common for sheep and goat in sheep and goat the most of the ticks uh, we encountered are the three host ticks but one host tick they need uh, the host for one time the one host tick uh, when the engorges engorges adult it lay egg in the cracks and crevices or in the grass blades and this uh, egg they hatch out to the larvae then this larvae they seek a uh, host to uh, to suck blood this uh, ticks are all the ticks all type of ticks are they are um, blood suckers so for completing their life cycles they need blood that is they are obligatory blood sucking parasites so uh, the larvae they need host to seek uh, to uh, suck blood and after getting to the uh, host they get engorged after sucking blood and one mold occur on the body of the animal so the larvae become neem that neem again they um, suck blood and they get engorged this neem again uh, one mold occur and the neem become adult and this adult they again suck blood and get engorged and um, get off from the host that is one host tick and two host ticks they needs to twice the host first the larvae they go to the host and after engorgement the larvae uh, shed off from the host and one mole talker and the larvae become neem and this neem again they go to the another host and they suck blood and they mo one mole talker in the animal and they become adult 
So this way, the two host ticks complete their life cycle. Example is Ripicephalus. Then the three host tick, the engorged adult females fall on to the ground and there they lay egg in the cracks and crevices and in the uh, soil in the grass. Then they go to the grass blades after hatching. The larvae go to the uh, grass blades. This hatching also very important uh, for hatching. Uh, they need certain uh, atmospheric temperature, some humidity. Then only during this, uh, when they everything is favorable, then only this hatching occurs. So this is a very important step to control the uh, this life cycle, the control the ticks. Uh, so uh, after hatching, the larvae go to the uh, first host and feed, then get engorged, drop down, mold to neem. Then neem again go to the second host, uh, feed, drop down, mold to adults, and adults again infest the third host. That way they complete their life cycle. Example is Haemophysalis bispinosa. So some events in life cycle of the ticks which are important uh, to know to control the tick, tick infestation uh, in the environment also in the animals. So an engorged female lay eggs after detaching from the host in cracks and crevices in the grass and in the soil. The egg laying can uh, last for several days. And once they lay, they started laying egg, they can lay from 2,000 to 20,000 number of eggs at a time. And after laying egg, the, uh, the female dies. The larvae need a few days or weeks to hatch out of the eggs depending on the weather condition. And hatching is faster by hot and humid weather. That's why these uh, tick infestations are more uh, commonly seen during the um, hot summer and during the rainy seasons. Soon after hatching, the larvae, uh, they climb to the tip of the grasses and they wait for their host to come so that uh, they can jump to the host and uh, feed the blood. So this behavior is known as questing. Here in the picture, we can see some larvae are questing. Adults also quest. Until and unless they get their desired host, they cannot just climb on and they uh, suck blood. That's why some uh, specificity for their host is uh, we can see. So they recognize a suitable host by its body heat uh, and exhale carbon dioxide, which they can perceive with sensory organs. Uh, that organs are placed in their legs. That is termed as Heller's organ. So now coming to soft ticks, uh, our um, concern soft tick is only uh, one gen one that is Autobius magnini. This Autobius magnini, they are laid on or near the ground for as long as six months. And they hatch in 18 days or more. The larvae then crawl up vegetation, fans, posts, and feed bunks to await for the host and unfed larvae may leave off uh, the host for more than two months. So for two months, they can wait for their suitable host. And if they find the host, they look it in the ears uh, and they get engorged for five to 10 days. Uh, for the Another difference between uh, this hard tick and soft tick is the soft ticks, they continuously feed on. And the hard ticks, they feed on engorged, uh, they drop down, Again, molting is occur, then again, uh, they suck the blood. So there is intermittent blood sucking, but the soft ticks, they are continuously sucked. The neem of the soft ticks remain in the ear for as long as seven months. And when they are ready to mold, they crawl out of the ears to the ground where they mold to the adults. The female may lay eggs for as long as six months at a stretch. And soft ticks leave the host repeatedly during blood feeding. Between the meals, they remain in their nest, which they leave for a new meal on with a, whatever host they can attach to. So the effects of tick infestation on animals. The effects can be classified uh, gross, uh, broadly into three types. That is the immediate effect on and the effect on the skin and their effect because of the uh, pathogen they are carrying to the animals. So they transmit many important diseases agents of animals and humans. So they uh, transmit the pathogens. There are two types of transmission mainly. One is the uh, trans-ovarian transmission. Another one is transtadial transmission. 
the trans ovarian transmission is um, uh, not common for this uh, uh, sheep and goat but uh, transradial transmission occur mainly for uh, sheep and goat this um, transmission of pathogen like uh, thylaria babesia anaplasma these are coming under the transradial transmission trans ovarian transmission is um, the adult get the pathogen then it can transfer it to the uh, egg and from egg it can transfer to the this one uh, egg to the larvae and to the neem that way they can carry this pathogen and can transfer the pathogen to the host and transradial is just like horizontal transmission so that is uh, they transmit the pathogens various uh, very uh, dangerous pathogens they transmit they cause irritation and annoyance to the host because of their movement on the skin and uh, affect feeding and metabolism of the host and that way they can reduce the productivity of the host and large number of tick infestation cause um, anemia because they are blood suckers the so decreased productivity of animals occur then they cause variable degree of inflammation on the skin and both immediate and delayed type of hypersensitivity can occur to the host and tick bites can also damage sensitive areas of skin like teeth vagina eyes then tick attachment between the claws of the feet may cause severe lameness sometimes uh, this uh, tick infestation if severe they can even cause death due to paralysis so if uh, death occur due to paralysis mainly respiratory paralysis occur so the diseases which are transmitted by ticks are mainly uh, protozoal diseases rickettsia viruses very important viruses are there like crimean congo hemorrhagic fever uh, ganjam virus that can be transmitted uh, bacteria like fasciarella brucella listeria staphylococcus this can be transmitted by this ticks picture is showing trans uh, thylaria ovis in uh, sheep lymphocytes which is transmitted by ticks so babesia ovis it is transmitted by rhipicephalus versa and rhipicephalus eversi babesia mortaci is transmitted by uh, hemophysalis species derma center species and rhipicephalus thylaria ovis transmitted by rhipicephalus versa and rhipicephalus eversi anaplasma ovis transmitted by rhipicephalus versa and rhipicephalus eversi likewise uh, anaplasma marginally also uh, transmitted by rhipicephalus species then hard water disease can be transmitted by amblyomma it is not that much importance for uh, sheep and goat but it can also occur tick paralysis uh, can caused by ixodes rhipicephalus amblyomma and derma center uh, two uh, new species of thylaria are there uh, that was thylaria luen sunai and thylaria uh, lesto quadri this thylaria lesto quadri is a very pathogenic one tick paralysis uh, mainly caused by this derma center ixodes rhipicephalus hyaloma hemophysalis uh, species the paralysis occur mainly because of the toxin made by the salivary gland of the, the female ticks that release uh, some toxins that interfere with the acetylcholine acetylcholine uh, release so there is in coordination in the movement of the animal and that occur due to respiratory failure and recovery may occur before um, if um, treatment is done so these are the gross lesions caused by the ticks here in the ear we can see there is um, hyperemia redness in the in the ear so it is inflammatory reaction it is immediate type of reaction then here we can see some ticks that are feeding on the host they are causing um, irritation uh, annoyance and in here also we can see sometimes there may be um, oozing of the blood and sometimes there is uh, uh, self inflicting trauma may be there because of the this irritation the animal just rub their body towards any hard object so that way uh, the trauma may occur and the secondary bacterial infection may occur in that wounds so these are the histopathological lesions uh, we can see uh, if there is if there is tick infestation the changes are mainly hyperkeratosis acanthosis 
parakeratosis we can see here it is not that much visible but everything is present in the first picture and here there is a dryness of the hair this dryness of the upper layer then uh, crust may form then secondary bacterial here in the third picture we can see some uh, bacteria are there this may be because of the secondary bacterial infection in the wound that are uh, caused because of the tick infestation uh, there is increased collagen synthesis because of the irritability because of the inflammatory reaction that is caused by the tick bite so how to prevent the tick infestation tick infestation mainly depends on agroclimatic region breed of the animal immune status of the animal system of rearing and hygienic condition of the farm where the sheep and goats are reared the large numbers of ticks uh, can be treated by using sprays and dips and all of the herd or flock should be treated at once and moving animals to different pastures if they are grazing and resting the contaminated pasture for a length of time can also help to control the ticks and in the meantime some uh, acaricides uh, can be applied to that pastures so cutting the bushes and plowing the affected area can help to control the ticks and large numbers of ticks can be found around the water holes and animal sh shelters the ticking should be uh, practiced in that areas the cracks and crevices in the animal houses should be removed and insecticides are applied if large number of ticks are found otherwise if few numbers of uh, ticks are seen then manual removal of the tick is the choice of practice so how to remove the ticks the first pull the uh, pull the tick straight upward using a any forcep slowly and steadily uh, we shouldn't tug or twist that uh, because it may rupture the tick in the body if the uh, tick break out and if the blood come out then the pathogen may get spread and wash and disinfect the bite area uh, remove ticks they shouldn't be thrown away in in uh, in the surroundings just like that that should be either burnt they should be killed properly some ethno veterinary practices or halver treatments can be uh, used like a mixture of common salt and few camphor in the castor oil or neem oil can be applied all over the affected area in the body and uh, some plant extract of lantana camera can be diluted with the urine and can be applied and it can also be diluted with the <clears throat> water then tobacco uh, can be boiled in 2 liter of water and can be sprayed all over the body of the infested animals and before starting any kind of treatment proper diagnosis is very much necessary otherwise all the treatment procedures all the control procedures will get failed and some bio pesticides can be applied uh, for controlling these ticks uh, like uh, bacteria and fungus uh, one bacteria bacillus thuringiensis var karstaki uh, and its toxins they are commercially available uh, in the market and they they are known to reduce the reproductive potentiality of the female ticks and egg hatchability and that way that can help to control the tick population and fungus metarizium anisoplai the powder of this is also available in the market commercially and this powder can be um, mixed with water and should be sprayed in the premises this fungus it shouldn't be applied on the body it is it should be applied in the premises in the cracks and crevices in the premises of the farm to control the ticks chemical chemical acaricides actually they should be Uh, used in the last stage when all other uh, tactics are uh, not working then only we should go for the uh, use of chemical acaricides because they have some detrimental effect on the animal body on the environment and on human also previously the chemicals that are used for to treat to treat this uh, ticks or to control this tick infestations were different oils like cotton seed oil fish oil lard oils then uh, come the arsenical compounds and non organic compounds later on these organochlorines uh, come um, 
like DDT. Then after that, organophosphates come, then amitras, then synthetic pyrethroids, macrocyclic lactones, fipronil, all these come one by one. And they come because there was resistance against this, that certain chemicals. Synthetic pyrethroids, they block the sodium channels. Organophosphates, they inhibit this acetylcholine esterase enzyme. Then amitras, uh, they block the uh, octopamine B2 receptor, octopamine and tyramine receptor in the NAP channels. Then fipronil, organochlorines, they inhibit the GABA activated chloride channels. Then macrolide lactone, like this, uh, avamectins, uh, they inhibit the glutamate activated chloride channels. This way, they kill the ticks. The methods of application of these chemicals on animal body, that can be, we can spray, there are washing or dipping, pouring, and systemic applications are also there. Oral tablets are there, and injectable preparations of ivermectins are there. So I want to show one uh, small video clip how to dip. This say they are dipping in the advanced countries. They are dipping in the chemical solution. So two to three times this way dipping is done. The proper feeding and watering should be done before dipping. Otherwise, the animal will just uh, take the water, take the solution of the chemical. The most efficient method of hand spraying uh, is as follows. This, uh, first spray along the entire length of the back, then the sides and flanks in a zigzag pattern, then spray in the brisket, then each legs, Spray in the belly, udder, or scrotum, then to the tail and anal area. So finally, spray the head, face, neck, and ears. So it should be from the uh, these sides, then back to the head. That way, toxicity we can just lessen. It is effective also. The some precautions that we should follow, like do not spray animals in a confined, non-ventilated area, and don't dip animals when they are thirsty or overheated. Avoid applying insecticides to sick animals and animals less than three months old. Other way, other things may arise, like toxicity may arise. A kill off of a large infestation can result in digestive upset, further stressing an animal's immune system. And resistance to insecticides and anthelmintic um, has become a serious issue due to the frequently uh, or not properly administration of these chemicals. So the main causes are incorrect dilution, inappropriate application, uh, persistent use of the um, acaricides, overdosing of the acaricides. And one more thing is exposure of the chemicals to sunlight during preparations. Uh, most of these chemical acaricides, synthetic chemicals, they need uh, certain preparations before application to the animals or to the surroundings. So during that application, if the that chemicals are just exposed to the sunlight, they may uh, lose their uh, functional activities. So that way, so uh, some of the functional activities they may lose. So resistance may develop in that way. And unhealthy animals with poor nutritional status will also leads to development of the resistance of the acaricides to the pigs. So uh, how we can uh, approach? Uh, to control and prevent this these uh, ticks. First, we should apply the herbal preparations and chemicals on the farms and premises of the uh, farms. Like in the cracks and crevices, we, we can uh, burn uh, the ticks which are present in the premises, not on the animals. Uh, we can scald them, scalding the, uh, the ticks, burning the ticks first in the premises. Then we can go for mechanical or manual removal of the ticks uh, from the animal body. Then also if ticks are there, then we can use uh, herbal preparations, the biopesticides that I have 
discussed in the previous slide, like the bacteria, the fungus. Then also, if it is, uh, if the ticks are there, then only we should uh, go for the chemotherapy on the animal body. So that way we can control tick infestation on animals. Mites are broad, uh, broadly they can be uh, four types of mites like burrowing mites, sucking mites, scab eating mites. They are almost same. Soroptis and coreoptis and hair follicle mites. These burrowing mites, sarcoptis. Uh, scabby. Uh, for uh, goat, it is capri, sarcoptis scabby, var capri, and for uh, sheep, it is sarcoptis scabby, var obese. Then sucking mites, soroptis, and uh, coreoptis scab eating mites. Both uh, their mechanism is same. The way they cause uh, disease to the animal, it is same. And hair follicle mites or demodex, they are sugar sept or elongated mites. They are hair follicle and sebaceous gland. They present in the animals. So this is the demodex capri or elongated goat follicle mite. It is also termed as sarcoptis, soroptis and coreoptis. These are of our concern. The sarcoptic mange, they actually, they are the burrowing mites. They go burrow into the skin of its host, causing various degree of dermatitis along the way. And they form crusty lesions. An extensive hair loss occur around the muzzle, usually, then eyes and ears. The lesions seen on the inner thighs extending to the hocks, brisket, underside, and axillary region. The, uh, there is thickening of the uh, skin and wrinkling on the scrotum and ear can be seen. Dry, scaly skin on all parts of the body, especially in the areas where uh, there is no hair, it can be seen. The large areas of scabies causes loss of condition in animals, which may become emaciated and eventually the animal may die if not treated during time. So these sarcoptic veins, they produce thickening of the hair, uh, thickening of the skin, along with alopecia and some dermatitis. The soroptic uh, veins, it is caused by this uh, soroptic uh, obis or capri. They live on tissue fluid. They are not burrowing. They pierce through the epidermis and suck fluid and cause inflammation. There is exudation of limb which dries up forming a crust. So that is the main difference between the sarcoptic and soroptic veins. In the sarcoptic veins, there is thickening of the um, skin. And in the soroptic veins, there is formation of crust. The mites are found under that crust. And the lesions found on the soldiers and sides in the woolly sheep and in the tails of hairy one. The soroptics mainly seen in case of sheep and sarcoptic mainly seen in case of goats. The lesions spread slowly and masses of wool are shed along with the tract where the, the sarcoptic is going. In heavy infestation, the animal become weak and die. In goat also, it can be seen mainly in the ears. The life cycle of the soroptic mites, their whole life cycle, it is complete in the under the skin or under the crust. Egg to larvae, larvae to protonym, triitonym, and become adult. These are the gross lesions that are caused by the sarcoptis and soroptic mites in the goats. Here we can see there is um, some dermatitis in the periocular area. There is uh, alopecia in the ear, in the muzzle. There is thickening of the skin. There is thickening of the, there is a loss of the wither and thickening of the skin. And here uh, we can see some caps or crust formation. There is some self-inflicting traumas can also be seen. Very severe, even uh, the uh, eyes are almost lost like. These are the gross lesions that caused in the, produced in the um, sheep caused by soroptis. There is alopecia, erythema will be there. Thick crust and fissures are formed on the skin. And under this crust, these soroptics can be found. And coreoptis are not that much of importance, but coreoptis bobis, it is uh, usually seen in the um, goats, mainly in the legs, in the tail. This is same. So these are the histopathological changes caused by sarcoptis. In sarcoptis, as it is a burrowing mite, we can see that in the in this picture in the down, 
the right side see the tract form after they burrow into the epidermis they are going them inside and we can see this is the mite so there are acanthosis paracaratosis hyperkeratosis rete ridges mites can be seen under microscope hypercollagenosis here also we can see and hyperplasia of sebaceous gland we can see this in all the slides mites are visible and rete ridges are there hyperkeratosis acanthosis is there coming to the demodectic mange Demodectic mange in sheep is not common, but it is uh, common in goat. There are uh, papules are formed that is non pruritic in nature. Papules and nodules are formed mainly in the face, in the neck, soldier, and sides or udders. Demodectic mange in goats occur most commonly in kids, pregnant dust, and dairy goats. That means we can see that whenever there is a uh, little bit lowering down of the immuno status of the animal, then this uh, mange can, this uh, mite can affect. The nodules contain a thick waxy grayish material that can be easily expressed and mites can be found in the exudates. So the papules form, that means always whenever there is demodex, inflammation occurs and this disease can become chronic. Here we can see the gross lesions. The papules are forming on the skin in the neck. So if we just uh, scrap this, we can uh, expose the exudex. So here, cigar-shaped demodex capri in the distended hair follicle of goat can be seen. Here we can see a demodex in the hair follicle in the skin. In the, both the pictures, demodex is seen in the hair follicles, causing some inflammatory nodules that are nothing but papules. So I have come across one photograph that is the location in the body as per the species of mites in the goat. According to the different different colors are there, like uh, this predilection is seen. Demodex capri, mainly in the face. Sarcoptis cabi in the this area. Coreoptis in the legs, in the tails. So prevention and control of mites. It is uh, almost same like pigs. The mites are usually more active in winter. That is the main difference. In pigs, pigs are more active during the hot climatic condition uh, in the summer, in the rainy season. And mites are more active in winter and uh, the oviposition rate is higher at lower temperature. In summer, the disease progress more slowly. Lesions are not obvious and can be missed. So subclinical, infestation may be present during the summer season but their activity is more their um, infectivity is more during uh, winter season in the inguinal pouches in the scrotum under the tail ears and skin folds are areas of focus for mites and serve as hiding places during the dry season so mites they, then migrate to the general body surface with the onset of the cold season the mites can be controlled by washing the infected area, spraying or dipping the animal with a suitable treatment. Six caps and crafts should be loosened or removed mechanically with a comb before spraying of the spraying of any chemicals or any herbal uh, preparations. Because the burrowing mites, the sarcoptes, they are under the skin, they are under the epidermis, and these sucking mites, soroptes, coreoptes, they are under the scab. And demodex, they are in the uh, hair follicle and in the sebaceous gland. So, it very chances are there that this chemical cannot reach up to the mites. So, the scabs and crusts should be loosened before application of any uh, treatment. All of the flock or heart must be treated for effective control. Treatment should be continued for four weeks minimum or till the lesions are cured. Otherwise, uh, resistance against these uh, chemicals will occur or the condition may be becomes more worsened and the animal may die also and we can apply uh, ivermectin we can apply ivermectin at the rate of 200 microgram per kg body weight per week for three to four doses so complete treatment should be there otherwise resistance will develop and uh, for uh, my treatment antihistaminics 
antibiotics and other vitamin supplements should be other systemic uh, systematic treatment should be there to uh, help the animal to get rid of these mites for facial mends one ointment can be prepared by mixing butox 200 ml of butox that contain 12 12.5 mg of delta methrin in each ml in 1 kg petroleum jelly that ointment can be prepared and it, it can be applied in that affected area twice in the week till lesions are subsided the animal can be washed with soap and water to soften and remove the epidermal scales to spray the animal houses and pasture fence with acaricides animals which are newly introduced to the flocks that can be the main source of infection for these mites because these they, these uh, mites are contagious in nature they can spread only through the contact so if i am having a healthy stock of animals whenever i am introducing a new stock quarantine should be strictly followed and before mixing of this new stock to the with existing stock uh, they should be treated also dipping or spraying can be done dipping is more effective for mite infestation than spraying acaricides like diazinon ivermectin can be used application of diatomite arc is also quite um, working in case of this uh, mite infestation it can be dusted this diatomite arc it is available commercially they uh, this dusting they actually they absorb the heat from the waxy outer layer of the exoskeleton of this uh, mites and ticks also so they can just uh, kill the mite and ticks the so damaging the layer increases the evaporation of the water and can kill the ticks and mites so in conclusion i can say that extensive grazing system favor the transmission and maintenance of ectoparasites in sheep and goat herds so extensive uh, grazing can be limited then removing cracks and crevices maintaining cleanliness in the premises are necessary to break the life cycle of the ticks as complete eradication is not possible due to our climatic condition and our rearing system control and preventive measures and overall the proper management of acaricide infestation is the key to maintain the sustainable sheep and uh, goat development because we know that eradication is not possible in our condition so what we should go for is to control and to manage the infestation with the collective efforts and cooperation between the farm owners veterinarians public administrators and with community sensitization program uh, we can control the ectoparasites from our farm premises as well as from our region so this uh, parasite control programs with technological advancement it can support the increased comfort for animals improved performance and products can produce higher quality products and the combined approach of an integrated pest management program is the most economical and environmentally sound tactic as well as uh, reduce the risk of pathogen transmission from the parasites i can give a take home message like prevention is better than cure it is the mantra to tackle this parasitic menace and hence maintaining cleanliness in the premises are important procedure to control these external parasites and holistic acarine control and preventive measures should be followed considering the side effects and resistance of acaricides on animals and environments because now in the one health concept everything and anything is interrelated connected correlated so everything we should keep in our mind before applying anything on animals it can reach up to us also and it it is reaching the environment for sure so we should keep all this in our mind so this picture it is showing uh, this flock of uh, sheep it is from uh, my uh, native village 
so though we know that sheep it is more uh, sheep population is more in the southern parts of india the telangana is um, posing this having the highest population of sheep but in this side also now in the northern northeast side also sheep um, rearing uh, this practices is now coming up